so the airway management is a basic skill for any intensive care physician so the airway management is also one of the first steps in stabilizing any critically ill patient allowing airway protection and optimizing oxygen delivery whether you are working in critical care unit or whether you are working in emergency room this is the basic skill you require so the basic airway maneuvers only suitable for short term use and may need to be followed by the establishment of definitive airway so for the time being you can manage oxygenation and then you have to go for the definitive airway so what are the ways uh, basically uh, you 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 try to manage oxygenation of the patient one is jaw thrust so you can give uh, you can give jaw jaw thrust you can do chin lift when the patient is unconscious and then uh, uh, and then uh, jaw uh, you can do head tilt jaw thrust and chin lift this is called triple maneuver to maintain oxygenation or to maintain airway if somebody is unconscious you can do this maneuver and you can uh, open the airway but uh, if the patient has cervical spine injury you cannot do head tilt or uh, and you have to be very very careful when you are giving uh, jaw thrust also so this is triple maneuver and you need to keep uh, sometimes if the patient is unconscious and the airway is collapsed you need to keep nasopharyngeal airway you have to, you, this is the nasopharyngeal airway you insert the nasopharyngeal airway or you can do uh, oral airway but you must make sure that patient is deep enough the patient is uh, like uh, sedated or the patient is unconscious before you keep the oral airway or nasal airway nasal airway is better tolerated uh, of in a conscious patient but oral airway is not so you can in the uh, like uh, the back should be the curvature when you are entering you have to rotate it uh, and then you have to go inside to uh, to keep the oral uh, oral airway that is called gudils gudils airway to manage the upper airway obstruction so these are the basic airway equipment we have a reservoir bag to administer high flow oxygen we have orofed this is the reservoir bag uh, like we have reservoir bag to administer high flow oxygen this is uh, this is the reservoir bag and then this mask and uh, bag is very common nowadays we use for lot of covid patients to give oxygenation to give more oxygen we use this and uh, we have different airways we have oropharyngeal airway this is oropharyngeal airway different sizes color coded again these are gudil airway these are called gudil airways large medium and small and then this is the nasopharyngeal airway the name of this is lindus nasopharyngeal nasopharyngeal airway and then the face mask uh, with a soft cuff and this is a face mask with soft cuff and self inflating bag to allow manual positive pressure ventilator this is called ambu bag so you, these are the basic airway equipment in each and every icu must have a cuff or two in the trachea provides a definitive airway when you can you cannot keep this uh, like a, a temporary airway for long time you have to go for definitive airway the patient should be pre oxygenated with high flow oxygen we are tightly fitting mask for at least 3 minutes prior to giving the intubation drugs this is very important if you don't do this when the moment you give sedation the saturations will start falling so this is very very important the in especially in patients with ards and the patients the covid patients when you like when you don't oxygenate properly and then they desaturate very rapidly and you can have a cardiac arrest during that time the patients at risk of aspiration of gastric contents a rapid sequence technique is used you get a trauma patient to the emergency and if you don't follow the rapid sequence in uh, intubation the patient can have gastric as uh, aspiration of the gastric contents this is the endotracheal tube uh, with the distal cuff with a pilot balloon this is the pilot balloon and then this is the cuff and this is a sub uh, th- this is a endo- this is the latest endotracheal tube with a subglottic suction port so this can be used for suctioning with subglottic secretions so what equipment you need to intubate intubate the patient so you need good suction working suction machine you have to check for uh, the suction machine you need mackintosh laryngoscope you need endotracheal tubes you need a uh, syringe to inflate the cuff you need tape to secure the tube you need alternative method of securing airway if intubation fails that is laryngeal mask airway so you need to keep everything ready 
before you intubate the patient and the most important thing is buji so buji in case of difficult intubation is very very important so you like this is a common question they ask in the anesthesia exams and in the basic critical care exams what equipment do you keep for main, maintaining a good invasive airway so we have to keep working suction machine we have to keep buji and then we have to keep laryngeal mask airway if you can't intubate and ventilate at least you can put the laryngeal mask airway you can ventilate the patient and this is the laryngoscope with mackintosh blade we have different sizes of blades and this is the endotracheal tube see when you are when you have gone to intubate a covid patient in a covid icu if you don't have proper equipment you don't have so many people to assist you so we have to keep everything in the intubation tray and then you have to take that intubation tray to the patient so this intubation tray will follow the patient when the patient is going for any procedure the patient is going for ct scan the patient is going for mri the patient is going for any procedure you need to carry the intubation tray because you never know when the icu patient airway will be compromised uh, when you go for the procedure when they give little bit of sedation their airway will be compromised and then you are forced to intubate uh, immediately so if the patient has a uh, full stomach and then we give cricoid pressure so this is a cricoid cortilage we give cricoid pressure like 30 cm of water is the pressure we give and this uh, the, and then you can do uh, intubation so without giving bag mask ventilation so that is called rapid sequence intubation so we give sedation uh, we give induction agent like thiopentone we give muscle relaxant rapidly acting we give either succinyl choline or atracurium or rocuronium and then you don't ventilate you don't you just pre oxygenate but you will not into you will not ventilate the patient and give cricoid pressure to prevent aspiration of the gastric contents and then we can go ahead and intubate the patient once the patient is paralyzed a mackintosh laryngoscopy blade is inserted until the tip reaches the base of the tongue and lifted upwards and away from the operator until the vocal cords are exposed the endotracheal tube is inserted under direct vision through the cords the position should also be confirmed by monitoring the end tidal carbon dioxide and subsequently by chest x ray to make sure the tip is at least 2 cm above the carina after successful intubation the patient should be connected to a ventilator on appropriate settings sedative infusions are started after intubation for the patient comfort and the tube tolerance so end tidal co2 monitoring is the key uh, to identify the right like um, whether the whether the tube is in the trachea or in the esophagus you are uh, and then your five point auscultation will help and then your chest x ray uh, will help whether the tube is in proper position or not coming to the next important procedure so i am trying to cover the airway management first and then i'll go for the vascular access the percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy the tracheostomy is a surgical procedure commonly performed in a critically ill patients and siaglia et al introduced this percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy way back in 1980s it is suitable to be performed at the bedside the indications are whenever there is difficulty in breathing from the mechanical ventilation whenever there is uh, like uh, whenever it is difficult to wean sedation completely and long term airway maintenance is required and then whenever there is a need for bronchial toilet so you have to do a uh, tracheostomy the stroke patient lot of secretions they are not able to maintain the airway then we have to go for tracheostomy so where appropriate uh, like uh, where appropriate any coagulopathy or platelet defect so should be corrected if there is any uh, any uh, coagulopathy or platelet defect you have to correct it and tracheostomy is not a procedure for single operator the team has to comprise of one operator for tracheostomy one endoscopist two is proficient in airway management manipulation and head and side there should be one person who can manage your um, endotracheal tube because when you are doing tracheostomy that man should retract the remove the endotracheal tube and then you, and then you should know how to do bronchoscopy when you are, you have to do bronco bronchoscopy guided uh, tracheostomy so he will keep the bronchoscope and see whether uh, even needle where it is going whether it is going through the endotracheal tube or are you damaging the posterior wall of the trachea 
so you have to monitor uh, you have to guide your uh, percutaneous tracheostomy with bronchoscopy and one support staff often a nurse familiar with the equipment and the procedure the one uh, good senior nurse who is familiar with the percutaneous tracheostomy should be available to give the equipment and then to monitor the patient and then to help us if there is any desaturation or if there is any uh, e e any hemodynamic fluctuation so pre packed procedure kit is uh, is this is the kit which is mainly available and most of the, most of us are using this kit and then if you look at the components of this kit and there is a blade 15 uh, size blade to uh, to give a nick and 10 ml syringe Uh, to aspirate and find out the aid and then to locate the trachea 14 gauze needle with cannula guide wire 14 french shot dilator sleeve for guide wire single stage tapered dilate dilator tracheostomy tube and tube introducer this is like a tracheostomy tube and then we have a tube introducer this is called tube introducer and then there are inner cannulas for uh, for maintaining the patency of the tracheostomy tube and this is the a uh, sleeve for the guide wire and single stage tapered dilator this is the single stage tapered dilator so if you look at the anatomy of the uh, airway this is the thyroid cortilage and this is the cricoid cortilage we do be, uh, below the cricoid cortilage we see the sub uh, this is the uh, you can see the tracheal rings uh, you can see the tracheal rings these are the tracheal rings and then and uh, this is the possible incision site in between the tracheal rings and this is the possible incision site and then this is the uh, this is the sternal notch this is the sternal notch and again you can't do it here so first you identify the first step is you have to properly position the patient you have to keep a roller sheet uh, under the under the chest and then you have to extend the neck if the patient has any cervical spine injury don't try to do percutaneous tracheostomy bedside if there is a coagulopathy don't try to do uh, if if you if you think that ble bleeding cannot be managed then better to shift this patient to the operating room where there is a better control and better light source so if if there is no contraindication and then you can enter with a needle with a sheet again it's like a seldinger technique and then you identify uh like you you identify the trachea by aspirating air and then if you have a bronchoscope you can guide you can see through the bronchoscope where are you uh, where where are you threading this uh, guide wire so after that you have to do uh, sequential dilators we have a uh, like a small dilator and then we have a single stage dilator and then we have to do we have to use that single stage dilator and then we have to we have to dilate with a single stage dilator and then we have to remove that and by using tracheostomy tube introducer we have to keep the tracheostomy tube and then we have to inflate we have to connect the mechanical ventilator circuit and then uh, confirm the position of tracheostomy tube and then remove your endotracheal tube after keeping the tracheostomy tube auscultate connect to etco2 do chest x ray and then see your ventilator tracings and then look for any bleeding first for uh, 40 uh, 12 to 24 hours if there is any wounds please uh, carefully monitor and take appropriate steps if there is any bleeding 